three, two. Good afternoon. I now call to order the meeting of the Legislative and Governmental Relations Committee for Thursday, January the 6th, 2022. In accordance with the mandated direction of the state superintendent, Baltimore County Public Schools and offices are closed to the public and non-essential personnel in order to maintain the health and safety of our students and staff. In accordance with the Board of Education's resolution approved at the March 10th, 2020 board meeting, in the event of a medical or health emergency related to COVID-19, the board chair in consultation with the vice chair and the superintendent may declare that a board meeting or board committee meeting be held remotely in its entirety without the physical presence of board members, subject to the establishment of a mechanism that would allow each board member the opportunity to fully participate in the meeting despite not being physically present and that would allow the public to also remotely attend those portions of the meeting that are open pursuant to the Maryland Open Meetings Act by being able to listen and or view these portions of the meeting. As a result, today's committee meeting is being held virtually and broadcasted through live stream on the BCPS website. In order to efficiently conduct this meeting, all voting items this, morning, this afternoon will be done by a roll call vote. Board members will say their names before making and seconding a motion as applicable, as well as when requesting discussion on an agenda item. Ms. Rosenberg, please call the roll to determine the presence of a quorum of the committee. Ms. Bastor. Present. Mr. Thomas. Present. Ms. Rowe. Present. Ms. Causey. Present. Dr. Hager. Present. Thank you, Ms. Mrs. Rosenberg. Will you now please call the role of staff members participating in today's meeting? Mr. Baysmore. Present. Mr. Corns. He's in another meeting. Yes. Yeah. All right, Ms. Rosenberg, um, just as a formality, if there are any other staff members present, will you please call their names? Thank you. All right, uh, just as a reminder, I'm gonna ask that if you have something to say or question, et cetera, that you please give your name and then you will be called upon. Thank you. First and foremost, I want to thank each of you for agreeing to be on this committee. Uh, this, I think, is um, an important committee. We, we do good work. Uh, we, we try to manage our time well. We get in, we discuss. Uh, if we need to vote, that's what we do. And we continue forward. And I look forward to us being able to do the same thing uh, as we go forward. Uh, in the past, we've had some good suggestions for things that we wanted to either add on our priorities uh, list or things that we wanted to take elsewhere for consideration. Uh, just um, be in, 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 because Dr. Hager, uh, brought up something at the last board meeting and I was talking to her about the priorities list. So just so everybody is clear about this, um, I guess what two and a half or so years ago, uh, Ms. Causey and I had a conversation about um, uh, something that Anne Arundel County does and she had seen it and she shared the information with me. And in my research, I realized that other counties do it as well. They model uh, their priorities booklet, if you will, uh, based on what May does. So it was very helpful. So that is how this whole legislative priorities list came 
to be, how it has birthed air, wings, oxygen, if you will, um, from something that Ms. Causey saw uh, from Anne Arundel County. So I thank you for that. Uh, Ms. Rosenberg uh, has just been a wonderful uh, advocate for this committee and doing so much more than, than taking the minutes and doing roll call. She knew what it was that um, I brought to her based on what was brought to me and where we want to go with this. Unfortunately, COVID had other ideas, but Ms. Rosenberg has, has crafted some things that we might be able to do uh, this year, hopefully, that gives even more depth to our priorities list. So I couldn't wait until we get to the end and say all of that and give the kudos and the thank yous. So I wanted to say it now as a part of the welcome and understanding uh, um, for our new members that um, the priorities list is not our end point. Uh, it simply means this is what we share based on the things that we have discussed in our past and some of the things about which Mabe has discussed. So we share it and put it out at the beginning of General Assembly, but it does not mean that we don't reach out as individuals or as uh, rep or representatives from the board to share with our legislators or councilmen. Ms. Rowe gave us one of our uh, pieces about the, um, and I always mess this up, Public, okay, what is it, Ms. Rowe? It's the okay. APFO task force, which is the adequate public adequate, adequate, adequate. It's that yeah. word, adequate. Adequate public facilities I, ordinance. Yes. All I know is law. that word, adequate. And um, out of that, we, we've seen uh, Mr. Baysmore worked on having a meeting between the council and us because we know that we're supposed to be having these kinds of conversations about populations and our schools, et cetera, on a regular basis, but it hasn't happened. Um, so he had worked on that. And then again, COVID happened, but Councilman Marks spearheaded a task force. Ms. Hen um, was our representative on it. So what I love about this group is that we are a think tank, if you will, and a think tank that not only spurs us on, but our council and our um, general assembly. So having said that, I'm gonna now turn this over to Mr. Baysmore. Thank you, Chairwoman um, Cheryl Pastor and uh, Vice, Vice Chair Christian Thomas for being in. I wanna welcome um, Dr. Dr. Hager. Um, as one of the new members to our legislative uh, committee, and uh, and Kathleen, who was on here originally and is and is coming back, I think, and uh, and with Lily Rowe, I think we have a really, really good, well-rounded, uh, yeah, well, well-rounded committee here. So, and especially this year, I think it's it's really good because, um, as we all know, um, you know, going through COVID the last couple of years, that the state legislature has been operating uh, as all of us in a virtual mode. Uh, they were hoping to open up this year, next week, one week from today, next Wednesday, the legislature will open. Uh, but uh, just yesterday, the Senate decided to have um, everything virtual. All the committee meetings, all of the hearings, all of the testimony, um, along with the House, um, will be conducted virtually uh, due to the uptick in, in the, uh, you know, the Delta variants, which is, which is understandable. Uh, so I just wanted to make sure our committee was was aware of that in case anyone wanted to testify either as an individual or testify representing the board on any of the legislation that's coming forth. Now, they are going to do this virtual up, up until February the 11th, I believe, and then they're going to reevaluate the conditions and see if they then want to pivot to in person or continue virtually. So I will make sure I keep this committee um, abreast, abreast of that. Um, we were able to um, pull down the uh, pre-filed bills uh, for this upcoming session. Um, there were about 30 or so bills, I think, that uh, dealt with education uh, in, in various forms. 
there were two local bills. Uh, what we tried to do is pull the ones that we know that uh, directly impact us in Baltimore County. And so there were two local bills that we highlighted and, and one, which is actually under new business today that we'll, we'll, we'll talk about. Uh, Ms. Eileen sent the uh, pre-filed bills. Um, I think they're on board docs uh, right now, if I'm not mistaken. I think Tracy sent those out. And so I'm um, looking forward to a good session. I think there will be a lot of bills coming out this session. Um, they, they've capped them. Well, well, they didn't cap the a number of bills, but it's, it's an election year also. So um, the thinking is, is that um, we'll probably have a good quality session, but there may not be as many bills as in, as, as in the past. Um, so we'll, we'll see, but whatever, uh, nevertheless, whatever, whatever happens, we're gonna be engaged. We're gonna be involved. Um, as a committee, um, um, you will um, represent the school board on any legislation that you that the school board in its entirety uh, uh, want to want to be heard on. But also as individuals, you can get a chance to uh, uh, to to weigh in. So uh, we have a good presence in Annapolis from Baltimore County. We have some really good delegates and senators. Um, as we know, the speaker pro tem is from Baltimore County, which is a big deal. And you always want to congratulate um, Speaker of the House, Adrian Jones. And uh, so I'm looking forward to a good session and uh, making sure that we stay engaged and, and informed on, on everything that happens down there. It moves kind of quickly. Uh, well, really quickly because it's four months. They cram in a whole lot of work in four months, which is kind of remarkable. And so a lot of times we may be needing to get things done rather quickly. And, uh, and be a little bit nimble. So uh, I think that's it, Madam Chair. If, if there's anything else you wanted me to uh, touch no, on, I, think I certainly thank will. You. That's a, a, a good overview. Before we move on to uh, the agenda as, as printed, and the first thing will be the um, legislative priorities, uh, which the board voted on at the last meeting, I'm going to ask the committee if you have any questions or comments about anything that either Mr. Baysmore or I had to say. Okay. All right, that being said, let's uh, go to the legislative priorities. Uh, as I just pointed out, we did take a vote uh, at the last meeting. And one of the reasons I made the opening comments that I did, and I'm gonna turn it over to Dr. Hager, which was one of the reasons I really wanted her to be on the committee. Um, and she's excited to be here. I'm so glad because we're excited to have you. Is that she does have a, a point of interest that I want her to share. Uh, we will do more with that, not today, but we will certainly do more with it because it is um, a most salient point to address. And I just wanted everybody to understand that if something is not on the priorities list does not mean that it is not something that we will, wait a minute, let me fix that sentence. It doesn't mean that we won't address it with our other elected officials. So having said that and not having to spend time with the priorities because the board already voted on it as it was written. Uh, I'm going to ask Dr. Hager and then I noticed Ms. Causey has uh, something she'd like to say. So Dr. Hager, would you like to share with the committee your point of interest? Um, regarding school meals, is that the? Yes. Mm -hmm. I just want to make sure you're on the right path. Yeah. Um, yeah so um, I'm aware of um, potential legislation that may be proposed around healthy school meals for all students. Um, and so there are two states that have already passed uh, bills to continue feeding all children with school meals like we've been doing during the pandemic. Um, that's Maine and California. And so right now the federal uh, funding to support this program will end uh, this spring. And so if we want to keep it going, um, it would be a state decision potentially. I mean, we'll see what the federal government does, but um, but yeah, so I just uh, 
you know, wanted to know whether we as a board would support a, a bill to continue to fund school meals for all children. Another bill I, I have heard maybe coming forward would be to um, require anyone who's CEP eligible to enroll in the CEP program, something along the lines of that. Um, but I've heard more um, more murmuring and excitement around uh, healthy school meals for all children. So that's that's about all I know. If that's if, is that is that kind of what you wanted to hear, Cheryl? Yeah, uh, and and so I'm going to ask you, Dr. Hager, um, since you put your foot in the hokey pokey circle, um, that you give us do some research and bring us some kind of information so we can be succinct and be clear about what it is we would like to attach to so that we can take we can discuss it here and then take something based on what you bring us and what we discuss possibly back to the board but that has so many far-reaching possibilities it's a little broad but i know you knew that so if you can just sort of narrow it in um just in terms of what we're doing in Baltimore County. I would certainly appreciate that. Definitely, and I, I actually thought it would have been pre-filled. I was looking through the list and didn't see it in there. So um, it's certainly coming soon. So, but I can get more information um, easily. And so what's the best approach to do that given that once things get started, they're gonna move at lightning speed for, for this. Yeah, um, Mr. Baysmore really is, is your go-to person because he's there all the time. So what we'll do, you'll do it, I'll do it, we'll take a look. We will scour through everything and pull up what is already out there in this regard. And then we'll figure out how we want, what we want to say about it, if there's something we want attached to have, but we will do that um, really expeditiously because you're right, they're gonna be moving. So if you will do that, Mr. Baysmore, and I will do that, anyone else on the committee wants to scour through and see what is pre-filed and then as things start popping, that we pay close attention so we can bring it back to the committee and see what we want to do, if anything, this year with it. Does that make sense? Does that work? Yeah, and I know I know that Mabe and other organizations provide weekly updates, and um, I'm sure Mr. Baysmore is is has his pulse on everything. Um, the one that I typically follow is the um, University of Maryland School of Law's Public Health Law Program, where they um, tab tabulate the different uh, health bills, specifically yeah. school health bills. Um, and so that's what I typically follow. So I would love to hear kind of the best way to that you all keep track of these during session. Well, you keep track. I keep track and then try to send it out during session to the board members after each May meeting, um, the kinds of things that they have shared. I do that during session. Mr. Baysmore hears it, not just through May, but because he's at the meetings, virtually or otherwise, he gets, and he's talking to the elected officials, he gets some other tidbits. So each of us will be attacking this from a different perspective. So I see that we can bring this back in short order. This is going to be great. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Causey. And then Mr. Thomas. Good afternoon. Um, it's great to be on the Legislative and Government Relations Committee. Um, I appreciate this opportunity. I want to say Happy New Year to all of you here and also to our whole community. Um, we're in a struggle right now, but hopefully the year will um, improve overall. Um, I did want to um, just dovetail a bit with um, Dr. Hager around the um, nutrition issue for our students. Um, I think it would be helpful to pull in the information from the offices fiscal services. We had a budget committee meeting yesterday and there was discussion around the um, food and nutrition program specifically. Um, so it would be good to understand specifically for our county um, what a change to our typical food and nutrition program would mean. Um, and then uh, I guess Mabe could roll that information up statewide um, because there are logistics and also fiscal impacts from changing the food and nutrition program. Um, and the other thing I wanted to do is I just wanted to thank Cheryl for taking our conversation 
um, and taking it forward to action and uh, what's been accomplished despite COVID, despite all of the other um, uh, issues that we've been facing, it's really going to be helpful to support our students and our staff and our families and our school communities in so many ways uh, to be able to advocate for just critical needs um, programs and also um, as we'll see as we have seen improved governance of the board for um, us to clearly understand our role and then to to really exercise our role to the benefit of the students so i appreciate your conversation i appreciate being on the committee great and thank you and welcome again and and you touched on um really a critical piece for us uh it's got to i just sort of said it at the end of, of what I said to Dr. Hager, but you brought it home, that we do have to take a look at whatever we want to, to act for whatever we want to advocate, that we're advocating for something that is gonna be sustainable for our system. That is the critical piece on all levels. And what do I always come back to? Okay, blueprint and money. So understand that this is going to be a tenet of the of, of blueprint how we we dealing with our young people how are we feeding them how are we addressing their needs so uh, Ms. Causey, your point is well taken it's not just what the state says we should do and want to do it is what are we as a system as an lea going to be able to do not for the short haul but to sustain it. And that is, again, the first part of our priorities list, isn't it? That we are going to be able to take care of what happens and what's good for our system and what we can sustain. So thank you for bringing that up and glad you're on the budget committee because now we, we're touching all of the corners. Thank you. Mr. Thomas. Thank you, Ms. Pester. Uh, my question is, uh, what is the process like to have the full board support a specific bill? Because would that take a would that be a vote on the legislative committee? Would that be a vote in the full board? For example, uh, House Bill 0154 is I think something that we don't necessarily explain in our at our legislative priorities list, um, but is pre-filed that I think the board might support. So, what's the process in the past to to uh, petition our delegation or say that we are in support of that as a full board? Mm -hmm. Uh, and that that's an excellent question, Mr. Baysmore. Anyone else may jump in, but um, if you bring it to the committee, as we were just talking about food and nutrition, bring it to the committee, and someone makes that motion that we carry it to the full board. We don't make a decision and say, okay, the board is the, now buying into this. We take it out into the world. Certainly, we will vote on it up down um or no vote uh because it didn't get a second and then it will go to the full board and we will then see how the full board feels about it but you certainly may as well you wouldn't know but because you weren't here during last session but um i always send out thanks to mr um Baysmore, who makes sure that we're on the same page about when something there's testimony on something, et cetera, or being requested, testimony being requested. And I can send it out if it's something that the board has not discussed or does not have a position on, but individuals might. So I'll send out an email saying on such and such a date at such and such a time. And this is what you do. You notify Mr. Baysmore and then he will uh, make sure that the people, uh, the chair of the committee knows that you want to testify and you're put on the agenda. So that's two different ways. One that we start in the committee and depending on what happens in committee, then we know how, whether we take it to the full board or what we do with it in terms of the full board or you speak as an individual. Okay. It does, yes. Um, and I forgot my next question, uh, but uh, thank you. That, that, that does make sense, yes. All righty. All right, I'm going to ask Mr. 
phase more. Any of like before I move to the pre-files because that's the bulk of what we're going to deal with today. Anything else? Any questions, concerns about legislative priorities? And again, I want to thank um, Kathleen for the idea, Ms. Rosenberg for the expansion of it, and for the committees, past, present, retread. That would be you, Ms. Rowe. I consider you the retread. All right, because you were here when we started it. So that's a compliment. Uh, that as we do all of this, thank you for getting this started because it's such a good thing for us to do. So any other questions before we move to the pre-files? Because we have some real interesting pre-files. OK, Mr. Baysmore, if you will, please. Yes, ma'am. In your documents that was sent out, if you would look on the Senate side first, we're going to look at uh, Senate Bill 0, 0055. It's sponsored by Senator <coughs> Charles Sidnor, and uh, it's the retention of of counsel. And I and I and I'll read read this pre-file bill. It says it's for the purpose of authorizing the Baltimore County Board of Education to retain counsel to represent it in legal matters affecting the board and to contract for the payment of a reasonable fee to the council and generally relating to the Baltimore County Board of Education. So this bill squarely is, 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 is in your lane and we wanted to pull this bill out and have some discussion about it uh, uh, today. Um, as you can see, the first reading of this bill is going to be in the um, Education, Health and Environmental Affairs Committee on the Senate side. And that committee usually handles about 90% of education bills. Um, uh, EHE is what they call it. And that hearing is January the 12th. Um, they just posted the um, format for testifying and written testimony for the for the bills this year. For instance, if, if a bill is scheduled for third, let's just say Thursday, for example, um, to, to, you know, for the hearing, then you can register to testify or submit written testimony uh, 48 hours prior to um, at 10 a.m. That's when it will open up. You would have to go on the Maryland General Assembly website. Each each individual was going to testify. You have to um, register on the My MGA in the right hand corner and register, and that'll doesn't take about a minute. And then you can go in and uh, um, fill out um, that you want to testify and also submit your written testimony. That is the only way anybody can testify this year, you know, under these, um, uh, you know, virtual rules is, is that they have to go in, register and uh, upload your test written testimony and register to speak. And then they'll send you a link, a personal link directly to you, let you know the time that you, you know, you will be speaking and confirm that you that that you you have registered. So because things move so fast, it's important that, you know, um, if there's a bill you could you're interested in, that you be aware of that 48 hour rule. That, you know, you that's when it, you can't um, register before that, but when it opens up 48 hours before the hearing, that's when you can get in. And, and register. So I just wanted to make our committee um, aware of that. And I also will remind everyone too, because uh, I know how busy everybody is. And um, so we'll keep an eye on that and making sure that those who want to testify either individually or representing the whole board, that we don't miss any deadlines. Okay, now let me just jump in on that because you said the hearing, the first hearing is on the 12th of yes. January. Yes, which I'm going to check that, Madam Chair. Because as you know, January the 12th is the first day of session. Exactly. That and so bizarre. So right. I would be very surprised if the the hearing is on the first day. So right. um, I'm gonna have right. I'm glad you pointed that out because I actually meant to say that. So this may be a typo on their part um, because they revamped the whole um, system this year and it's just starting to get, you know, everything is uh, being posted. So um, I, so if that's the case, um, then for this particular bill, um, I, I need to find out when the actual hearing is 
Um, we know it'll be after the 12th. It won't be before because the session starts the 12th. Um, but I just want to make everybody aware of that 48 hour rule. Well, and, and I bring that up because it being the first day, it's also the day after we have a board meeting. So even if with the best intentions, we were to vote on this, uh, uh, presented to the board, we don't have 48 hours. My hope is that they mean the 12th is the opening of the 48 hours. Um, but let's say it isn't, and maybe they are going to do this on the 12th, then we would need- You would have that Wednesday, you would have that Wednesday to register or that, that, that Tuesday or Wednesday. Not for 48 hours prior to it, it would be Monday. So in any case, if you can find that out and then I will send it out to the committee. And if that is for real, then we will just have to give the bill number. I'll, you, will, you can do the overview of it for me, if you will, and we'll send it out. You and I can send it out to the board to see if anyone wants to respond to it, testify individually because we don't have, won't have the time to do anything else with it. Um, I will point out, uh, because some of you may remember that this past session and even the session before there was one about the attorney. And uh, just to make sure you're clear about what's different in the past, the past two years, it was tied to a financial finance Director, I've forgotten the other position, which was not about, um, they were two different positions and both were full time. This is strictly in the sense of how we even currently um, contract for legal counsel for the board. The difference being that we would now be completely responsible versus having to go through the county. We're the, the only LEA in Maryland that does not handle its own um, counsel in terms of the contract. So it's, it is exactly, it looks like what we have, except we are responsible. So Senator Sidnor has said, if the board is not interested in it, he will pull it. But um, we know we've heard from Ms. Howie, uh, Mr. Sidnor has heard from uh, Mr. James, did I mix his name up? I always get his name backwards, is that right? What's the attorney's name, county attorney? Is that his last name? James Benjamin. Benjamin. James Benjamin. Benjamin. Yes. Mr. 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 James Benjamin. Thank you. Okay. Like I said, I always twist his name around. So uh, just process it, pull it up, look at it, uh, and make your decisions. Mr. Baysmore is going to get back to us as soon as possible with some times and dates to see what's real. Any questions about this pre filed? Yes. Uh, is that Ms. Rowe? Yes. This um, so this is probably a question for um, Tony to research if no one actually knows, but I'm confused about this a little bit because I thought that the way that we hire our attorneys now and having to go through the county was something that was part of the county charter. And I was wondering if this law is passed by the General Assembly, does that override the county charter and force edits to the county charter? Or then is there a whole other process? And I am I would like some clarification on that. <clears throat> Thank you, Ms. Rowe. Anyone else? All right, Mr. Baysmore, if you'll go to the next pre-file. Okay, I was just taking a little Oh, wait, Ms. Pause it. do you have a question or comment? Yes, thank you, um, Ms. Pestjor. Mm -hmm. So recently the Policy Review Committee was reviewing Policy 8350, which is an internal board um, operations policy, um, which is called Council. 
and it's under consideration um, currently. And so there is a policy analysis that is attached to board docs under the um, policy review committee meeting that was held um, December 13th. And part of the policy analysis. Wait, excuse me, Kel, what is it called? What is, what is it called? Policy 8350. Thank you. It's currently called council. And the staff recommendation is that it's renamed as board council. So I just wanted to re, uh, reiterate what Ms. Pasture said, which is we Baltimore County Board of Education is the only district that um, is prohibited in state law uh, from hiring their own board council. I would also point out that in the policy analysis, there is uh, several very good examples of other districts that not only have in their policy uh, that they are able to hire, but also it clarifies the role of that board council for the board of education. Um, it also, um, several districts also reference the funding of the board council. Um, so I think it is a worthwhile um, bill to be discussed in the legislature. I also think it is worthwhile for our board um, to discuss it, which can happen at the opportunity of first reader, um, excuse me, first or second reader. And so I guess if there's a time constraint, would it make sense to um, vote to recommend that the legislature pursue the bill, um, perhaps maybe with amendments um, in terms of clarifying the role um, and looking to these other school districts policies um, that have some helpful language, I believe. So I'm just throwing that question out there. So, Mr. Thank you, um, Ms. Causey, because there are a couple of things that are involved in it. So, Mr. Baysmore, you first handle Ms. Causey's question just because it's it's so on top of us. How do you think we better best handle this? Yes, ma'am, Madam Chair. Um, and you could you could certainly um, write a letter of support of this particular legislation move, you know, as it moved forward. And then we would keep an eye on the legislation and the language of the legislation. And then at 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 the next uh, hearing, uh, because this will be the first one, the first. Um, we, if there's some amendments or you or, or we'll be actively working with Senator Charles Sidney, or if we wanted to amend some things, um, then we could because this is a local bill. So um, and it will go through our local delegation. Um, so we will have a couple of bites at the apple, so to speak, to kind of um, tweak it or, or clarify some things or, 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 or amend it before it gets to the to the full vote. So um, again, because it's, because things move so quickly, sometimes if it's easy, you know, sometimes it's easier to write a letter of support that we can submit so that the senator knows the that that uh, he has the support of the uh, board while he's moving through. Um, with the legislation, if, if that made if that made sense. So, Mr. Bazemore, are you suggesting that we move this to the full board for a recommendation, or for uh, to see if we have the full board support? Yeah, mm -hmm, coming from this legislative committee. Um, okay. Yeah, I, I would think that would be the best. The, would, the best if we did that, it would get on a board meeting, hopefully before they do the readers. Um, would you be able to obtain the answer about which takes precedence of the county charter or the state law? I guess my question is, I don't know how we know to support something or not if we don't even know if the state law change would even make a difference. Because I was under the impression that the only reason it was in state law like that to begin with is to mirror the county charter and to just make the two align. So I guess what I'm not clear on is if we support this law and the law changes, does anything in reality change? Or are we just have a situation now where the state law is out of alignment with the county charter, but we still have to follow the county charter? 
So I feel like that's an important question to answer whether we would be able to know if we could support this or not. Well, I, I'll just jump in to say Mr. Baysmore so that Ms. Rowe feels completely comfortable with uh, the answer and you as the government and legislative liaison, you pull it back. But I did have a conversation with the senator um, and asked similar questions. Um, and he gave me the assurance that he had done uh, his homework, the background, but I would feel far more comfortable in light of Ms. Rowe's question if you just do that uh, due diligence and get back to us with a very official response. Um, and we do have a little wiggle room. I was looking at an email I got, uh, I think today, about it, but it didn't say anything about the date, so I can't help you with that. Um, so if you will do that, and because our meeting is Tuesday, we will leave it. Ms. Rowe, he will do that piece. We still have a lot of things that we might want to take a look into before we just rush and take it to the board, I think. Um, but it doesn't stop any one of us on the committee in taking a look or responding as soon as Mr. Baysmore gives us the answer because this is so new, you can, as an individual, say what you want. And then we, as it moves, is that correct, Mr. Baysmore? We, that gives us that wiggle room with the board. Am I right or wrong on this? Yeah, those are the two lanes you can function in in, in, in the legislative sessions is if we do, if we don't have a vote from the full board to support any particular legislation, then as an individual, um, you know, you can always speak. I mean, we, we've, uh, you know, everybody's done that around the state. If we have, you know, a board member or someone that uh, feels a particular way about um, any, any particular bill, but they're not representing the board, they can, you know, um, 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 register to testify. But then when they testify, they have to make it known up front before they testify that although I may be a member of the Baltimore County Board, that I am not in no way speaking for the board. I'm speaking as an individual uh, um, resident. But I, my question is more since it's on top of us because we won't have then that 48 hours. So unless we just do it now, my question is there will be other times as it moves where so that we will have had the opportunity, even if we speak as an individual, to go back to the board, present it to the board, have the board vote, and then there's another opportunity to speak on it. That's what I'm saying. Is that not correct? Or yes, yeah. yes ma'am, because you'll have second reader. You yes. Can it. You'll also have the Baltimore County delegation who will bring it up in delegation. Yes. Um, you'll have a chance to speak there. Yes. So um, if it's referred to a subcommittee, you'll have a chance to speak there. If it's, you know, it's a, there'll be a, Opportunity. For opportunity. Yeah, so I want to just stick with um, where Ms. Rowe is that if you give us, we get all the information we need to have that gives PRC, everybody, all of, have all of our ducks in a row. We have an opportunity as a collective to speak to this. So I'll follow up with, with uh, Mark, um, our, um, Ms. Margaret Ann Howie, because that's a legal question she's asking about if this if this bill conflicts in any way with the county charter and so then she'll um and i'll cc you um madam chair when i email her and um see if she can answer miss rose question because that's a legitimate question um yeah yeah so exactly. for the sake of time i see miss causey and mr thomas have questions if it's something new miss miss causey and then mr thomas if it's something new so we can get to what else mr Baysmore has for us. What other goodies? Ms. Causing? Thank you, Ms. Pasture. Um, and just a question that I think would be helpful to ask is in speaking to the council, um, retain counsel to represent it in legal matters that affect the board. So there are many matters that affect the Board of Education, including we are the only official government entity. So anytime anyone tries to sue 
uh, they sued the Board of Education. Um, so my question is, we have a law office that is administered and supervised by the superintendent. So does this um, law pertain to all of the legal activities of the law office where they go out and hire outside counsel for different situations? You good, Mr. Bazemore? Mm -hmm. If not, if you have any questions, if you'll refer back later to Ms. Causey to clarify, or Ms. Causey, if you'd like, you can put it in the chat and he can copy it either way. Um, okay, thank you. So you can clarify. Mr. Thomas? Um, I will pull my question for the sake of time. All righty, thank you. Uh, Dr. Hager, you were typing and then you stopped or, or something happened. Yeah, I'm good. Okay, thank you. All right, Mr. Bazemore, our next pre-filed. Uh, the next pre-filed bill is House Bill, actually, uh, 0192. And this bill was uh, pre-filed by uh, Delegate Eric Ebersol. And this pertains to the student board member, uh, Baltimore, and, and, and it's a local bill. It only pertains to Baltimore County. So Baltimore County Board of Education student member voting. Um, and I'll read it. It says, for the purpose of authorizing the student member of the Baltimore County Board of Education to vote on capital and operating budget matters and generally relating to the Baltimore County Board of Education. And again, they have this first hearing reading down at January as January the 12th, but uh, again, I'll check on that. Okay, that must all just be for them to talk to each other for real that because those are two biggies for us. They, I can't imagine that rush. Okay, um, let's see. I'm lost here. Let's see, Miss. What am I looking at first, Mr. Thomas? Your question is it pertaining to that pre-filed? No, that was to the uh, to the first one. Okay, Miss Rowe, is yours pertaining to this particular pre-filed? Yes. All right, go ahead. So um, my question is, uh, there was a board meeting that I was not at. I was sick and. Did the board already take a position on this or is this a, is this different substantively somehow? It is different substantively because uh, and I tried to make that perfectly clear that we weren't having a discussion about whether what we thought about the bill because uh, Delegate Ebersol actually didn't have a bill at that time. <laughs> OK, he, uh, and he spoke that night and it wasn't really fin he hadn't finished crafting it. It was simply whether we wanted to put on the priorities list. Um, um, the student board member and we had not had a real dis we haven't had a discussion of it, so we could not really put it on there. So it was voted down to put it on the priorities list. But okay. this is different because now we're looking at a bill. So are we having that discussion now? You or certainly you okay. certainly may have a dis so, discussion of it now. Yes. So one of one of the things that concerns me about the idea of the student member of the board um, having voting rights on the budget is that the student member of the board is not necessarily or even the student body that he represents the entity that has the enfranchisement civil liberties and that that rests with the general assembly and so certain things the general assembly has said that board members have to do we have to do financial disclosure forms but the student member is exempt from financial disclosure forms and part of that engagement in the budget would we should look at whether or not a student member should then be have to do um, financial disclosure forms or whether or not even their parents should have to because as if they're minors those business interests may be their parents and not necessarily theirs as they don't contract for things like their home or anything like that and the other thing that I think is somewhat problematic with putting um, the student member in charge of the budget is that in our country, in the history of our country, uh, voting rights are very closely tied to taxation. And 
the students that the student member represents are not property taxpayers and they don't have voting rights in regular elections. And so therefore we're putting, we're diluting the um, impact of adult taxpayers by allowing students who are not taxpayers to have a say in something that has traditionally been exclusively something that is the right of taxpayers. So that I think is the second issue is that as the students um, are not taxpayers, it dilutes the rights of taxpayers. But also the other thing is the student member of the board election is not governed by the state board of elections. And so I think that voting over the budget because it is taxpayer money that is being adjudicated is something that it is a substantively different thing. So unless we're going to say that the student board of the members, um, the student board member is elected by the population and not students or is elected under the jurisdiction of the uh, state board of elections or has to fill out financial disclosure forms along with their parents, it's problematic to allow a student member to have uh, voting rights over budgets. OK, thank you, Ms. Rowe. Anyone else um, have any comments on this? Mr. Thomas. Thank you, Ms. Sector, and uh, thank you, Ms. Rowe, for, for raising your comments or concerns about the student member of voting rights. I just wanted to start off by uh, stating that there are two local education agencies in um, the state of Maryland that do have full voting rights for their small, which includes the capital and operating budgets. Those are Anne Arundel County Public Schools and Montgomery County Public Schools. And I do not believe either of those are governed by the, uh, I don't remember the, 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 the voting service that uh, Ms. Ms. Rowe was mentioning. Um, according to statute, the Baltimore County student member of the board is elected by procedures outlined by the Baltimore County Student Councils. Um, I, I completely kind of agree with Ms. Rowe's comment about uh, the financial disclosure forms and kind of the inaccess there. So I'm wondering if this committee would be inter would be open to possibly asking the PRC committee to uh, the, or PRC to review that policy again and discuss you know, having the our Baltimore County SMOB uh, have to submit financial disclosure forms or uh, their parents. I think that would be a great conversation for PRC to have. Um, and uh, one of the thing, one of the things I've been hearing, not just from uh, board members, but also from the public, is that the student member uh, is not a taxpayer. But the Board of Education, our board, does not have spending authority over the matter. And I think uh, to have one voice of students on the capital and operating budget out of the 11 other voices on the board and the voice of the county executive and the voice of the county council, all of which going into the capital budget and the, and, and the operating budget, uh, that one voice is making an impact uh, only on the Board of Education. And there are so many other uh, individuals that are taxpaying or do represent taxpayers. So I don't think it would sort of uh, dis, it would destroy the uh, the value of voting rights um, that has historically been tied to uh, taxpayers because on a board of education we're not a typical governing body we don't have full governance uh, capabilities you know we are we're governing over a school system that was built and, and created for the education of of students the same people who should be able to have a say in, in that education uh, so I just wanted to say that and also to mention that this same bill was introduced two years ago it uh in the small voting rights overview that i sent out to all board members i outlined that process and how it was uh, co-sponsored by it was sponsored by delegate pat young co-sponsored by delegates eversol and michelle guyton and uh it uh from my understanding would have passed if not for COVID 19 when its uh second reading when its third reading was unable to continue um in the senate after passing the readings in the house um on march 18th 2020. So just wanted to share that and uh, thank you all for the opportunity to speak on this. Thank you, Mr. Thomas. Ms. Causey, you're typing. Um, can you speak and type? I'm looking at the clock, but I want us to have this conversation. Thank you. I'm I'm typing the about the other issue just as the reminder oh. in the chat. Oh, OK. Thank you, Ms. Causey. <laughs> all right. Um, the same thing that I said about the, the previous pre filed bill, um, they're killing me with this January 12th. Um, Ms. Rowe, I, I agree with Mr. Um, Thomas. 
uh, and thanking you, you, you actually pointed out some things that I hadn't really processed, um, but not just pointing out a negative, you talked about what would need to be done, which gave Mr. Thomas fodder for something that we could look at. So I appreciate that. I appreciate that kind of conversation um, where we don't, we're not just naysayers, we give a reason for the nay and how we might be able to fix the nay or some considerations. So thank you for that. Um, wow, uh, Mr. Baysmore, I think that conversation between Ms. Rowe and Mr. Thomas there put something else on your plate um, or both of our plates, I guess, because I really do want to know um, what stipulations would be tied to just something like asking now, that's a whole different ball game, asking parents to have to do the financial disclosure uh, form. There are a lot of pieces in that that we need to look at and possibly even talk to the delegate about, and, and it may be embedded somewhere that we just don't see on the, the, the pre-filed. So I'm going to suggest that we stay just as we did with the previous one. Let's do our homework because we have the time. Uh, we'll just let Mr. Uh, Delegate Eversall, like we will Delegate uh, Senator Sidnor, know that these are the things that we have in our heads and we want to be able to have those answers so we can present it to the board. Uh, Mr. Thomas, I'm just going to ask you if that's how does that sit with you since this is something very close to you? And then I'm going to ask Mr. Baysmore what he thinks. So give me the short version, Mr. Thomas, of how this sits with you. OK, short version is I would like us to at some point take a stance on this issue um, again, doing our research in the future. So sometime as this is going through the process, take a stance. Uh, but uh, I, that, that sounds good. I think we definitely need to all do more research and have more conversations about this before making the vote. Yeah, because we have some good points that you might want to throw out there that will just filter into our brains. Mr. Uh, uh, Baysmore, what do you think? And then Ms. Causey has a question. Uh, so I think the, if I hear correctly, there was a question about the financial disclosure form for the SMOB representatives, either by the, the member, uh, him or herself, or the parent. Is that correct? Is, if, if that's required? Yeah, that's where what Miss Miss actually Miss Rowe had um, a couple of things along those lines. So what I'm going to ask her to do is what Miss Causey did for the last one. I'm going to ask that she actually type it out and give it to you. So we make sure that we have the exact things. Mr. Thomas, you may do the same um, so that we ha have the exact points that we would like you and me, actually, the two of us to investigate so that we can, as Mr. Thomas has said, we can get to this with some speed and alacrity as opposed to just letting it drag. Okay, okay. Um, so if both could email me and, and the chair, that would be perfect. When do you need that email by? Now. <laughs> as, as absolutely said, just as Ms. Causey was typing, as we were speaking on this, if you can get it together as soon as possible. So he remember this has a January 12th date too. So we don't want it to linger. So the sooner he gets the questions, he can get the answers and then we can make sure that we have it by the time we meet again and then get it to the board. OK, I'll oh, have them by. Nice. I'll have them by close close the school tomorrow. Thank Perfect. You. Perfect. Perfect. All right, Ms. Causey, you have a question. Thank you. Um, related to the um, question of the SMOB expanding voting rights in Baltimore County, um, I was curious if there had been a survey done of students um, related to this issue, but also this is um, a potentially very big issue. And as an elected official, 
it had not been on the table when I was elected. So when I was campaigning, as you um, also know, Ms. Pester from campaigning and Ms. Rowe, um, a lot of people will tell you what they think about a lot of things when you're campaigning, which is very helpful. Um, but this was not an issue, so that was had never come up. Um, so I'm wondering if it would be um, important to somehow survey our stakeholders um, to understand what what is the perspective of um, the stakeholders, especially as Ms. Rowe was pointing out the tie between voting rights and tax paying um, and participation in citizenship in that regard. So I'm just uh, asking that question out loud about a potential um, quick survey or if uh, Mr. Thomas has information about a student survey that was taken through. Um, I know the SMOB has different channels that that are used. Mr. Thomas, thank you, Ms. Causey. Mr. Thomas, has there been a student survey? There has not been an official student survey, but uh, there can be an official student survey okay. provided. I'd also just like to warn that um, for the type of surveying that we do to make sure that it's some type of random sample survey and not just a convenience survey. I'm an AP stat, or it's not right now, so I'm learning about this. Um, and to make sure that everyone has the opportunity to, to, to do it and that it's not just individuals who have the strongest passion on the issue that fill out the survey. If it and, must open to larger stakeholders. Sorry, Ms. Pester. No, 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 no. I'm sorry. Thank you. Um, and Ms. Causey, in terms of one for adults figuring out which population, well, our constituents, um, I would like to have the information, answers to the information that Ms. Rowe posed, because as Mr. Thomas said, people always say, well, they don't, uh, it's about, um, taxes they don't pay tax whatever but if we have the answers that she to the questions she posed that's additional information that we can give folks before they vote and i think that the more information we can give people the cleaner the vote is but we can certainly i've made a note about it that that's something that we can do that thank you miss pasture yes i i appreciate your points about getting those answers Thank you, Ms. Causey. All right, Mr. Bazemore, I keep losing people on the screen. Oh, there he is. All right, Mr. Bazemore, what's next? Um, those are our two local bills, and and uh, uh, we have our, uh, I'll wait for those emails from Ms. Causey and, and um, Ms. Roy and Mr. Thomas so that we can follow up, follow up on those really quickly and get your answers really quickly for this, for this committee on those local bills. Okay, I appreciate that. Thank you. Um, great conversation. I like it when a plan comes together. Good questions, get good thoughts, and it stays in the light, uh, and we can move forward. Uh, Mr. Baysmore, you know I'm a I'm a clock watcher, so here we are, and I'm taking responsibility because I had a long opening, so it's on me. So if the committee doesn't mind, can we just do another ten minutes? And we finish about quarter after. Is that okay with the committee? I have that time. Thank you, Dr. Hager. Yep, works for me. Thank you, Ms. Causey. Yes, that's fine with me. Thank you. Thank you. And I saw a thumbs up from Mr. Thomas, Ms. Rosenberg, and Mr. Baysmore. Are you okay with this? Yes, ma'am. All right. Thank you. So, if you can give us the the quick version of anything you want to to say about the um statewide ones knowing that um all of that is on uh board docs we have all read it or can read it so we're not going to perseverate over anything at this point that's statewide and i will bring you back whatever reports wherever made is with any of the statewide ones that pertain to education all right, anything you want to add? Anything that jumps out at you, Mr. Bays, more from the statewide? Uh, no, man, you, you you covered it really well, Madam Madam Chair, at, you know, actually. And um, we have a really good working relationship with Mabe, who does an excellent job of keeping all of us informed uh, of, of, of the statewide bills. Uh, they don't usually get into the weeds with the local bills, but the statewide bills, um, they rep represent us very well. And they're big, they're big, you know, what they highlight all the time is making sure that local boards have autonomy and that you actually have the uh, wherewithal to um, to do your jobs. Um, and this gets back to Dr. Um, Hager earlier 
Um, I wanted to say that, um, you know, with her resources at the University of Maryland and, and with our connection with Mabe and um, Eileen and myself, we look at the, um, the bills every day and, and try to keep up with, with, with every bill. And so when you highlight um, food and nutrition, that that's a good thing because now you know because sometimes we miss things it's, it's it moves fast we don't miss we don't miss too much though try not to miss anything but uh we will kind of make sure we keep our eyes open for any bills uh, around food and, 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 and nutrition and so when when this committee um any 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 individual here say hey i i'm kind of interested in this that's a good thing to let let you know myself know the chair know and miss eileen because we will you know, put an extra eye on those and keep our ears open if anything in that area comes up so that we can all um, um, be, in, be informed. Uh, the way we went through these local bills just now is kind of the format for moving forward for any bill, you know, um, that we can have the discussion. If we need more information, we'll get it so that so that this committee, when you do vote and decide uh, to move things to the full to, to your full board, um, you know, you're, you're well informed. And, and, and by the time it gets there, you know, a good committee, by the time it gets to the full board, you've kind of done all the, you know, the, the, the weed stuff and then, you know, and, and, and then kind of, uh, you know, you know, give them the overview. So um, just want to thank everybody. I, I really am excited about this. It's, it's really good committee and it's important committee, especially right now with everything that's going on and the implementation of the Kerwin. We'll, we'll be keeping our eyes on that as well because um, we think that there's going to be some some um, maybe tweaking of, 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 of the of the blueprint. Um, um, so we'll keep an eye on that as well. But I think that's it, Madam Chair. I want to thank everybody, Kathleen. And I, I, wait, I, hold on. I want to uh, thank Ms. Causey. Um, Mr. Baysmore, look in the chat because she wrote um, her piece of, of about. I copied it for you. Oh, OK, excellent, excellent. Is that the general question on 8350 on 8350? Yeah. OK, Ms. Rowe has a question for County Council. Yes, so um, Mr. Baysmore, on the APFO task force, mm -hmm. um, I know that they concluded and gave their recommendations and that the board voted already to support the recommendations of the APFO task force. Oh. Mm -hmm. Do we know when the APFO task force recommendations will be presented to the county council in session? And if the county council plans to do any bill drafting in regards to implementation of those recommendations? I can I can follow up on that. Uh, Ms. Rowe, and I'll reach out to uh, Councilman David Marks, who, who led that effort and um, see where they are with that with that APFO. That's an excellent question because yeah, we did vote on the recommendations. If I recall, it was 11-4. Um, and we do not want this to drop because I'm seeing housing going up in places. I'm thinking, this is housing for children. These schools can't take one. They can't take a cockroach in it, let alone a child. OK. Well, um, and, that. My other concern with this recommendations not having movement is that we've done an awful lot of work on my iPass, but the uh, my iPass recommendations are contingent upon having some sort of a county statute where there's a correlation between housing development and school building. And those those recommendations about our own county law found that the county law itself contributes to the overcrowding of schools. And I would hate for the my iPads to be obsolete within a few years because those recommendations were never implemented. My point exactly. Thank you, Ms. Rowe. You're absolutely um, correct. So th they have to be. We've got to start working on that now. They have to. They must. And I would, I'm and sorry. I, I just wanted to. Um, put a ribbon on that. We had great representation from Chairwoman Hen on that APFO committee. She was really, really engaged because uh, I, I tried to keep up with all the hearings. And uh, so she was she's another good resource too, because um, uh, she, she was an actual member of the APFO uh, committee. So but I'll, I'll reach out to Councilman Marks and see wh where they are on that one, Lily. 
Thank you. All right, let me go up because I was about to miss something. Ms. Causey, you have a question. Ms. Causey. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yes, thank you. Uh -huh. So um, I had a question if there was um, or if there's any bills about start school later or um, any other state law that influences that issue. And then the other question I had is um, Mabe, this is a general question on the Legislative and Government Relations Committee voting and also on the full board voting on bills. Um, Mabe, I understand, votes to support bills oppose bills or support bills with amendments. So is that a structure that this committee and also the full board could follow if there are bills that we feel are certainly relevant, but perhaps for our district may need certain amendments or or even holistically may need certain amendments um, to be improved? Right. Mm -hmm. and, and that's a good question. And Mr. Baysmore can attest to this because in the past, um, what I have done, if well, and it's only, I think it's only maybe been twice that they have brought up something on which we have to vote. Generally, John will talk to us in advance, tell us in advance, or he'll just say, this is what the executive board is going to do. They, he just sort of says, this is where we are. We'll discuss it. So generally, we have either discussed, that's why I like this committee um, and, and why it was good being on several committees because they were things that had been discussed in committee on board at board meetings. So I had a sense of where the board was. And I don't know um, if you recall, Ms. Causey, it was your first year and I was, I had to, I think I text you, but I, I have to say, I, I, I don't think you ever responded, but it's okay because I had to do it right at the at the moment as it came up so i had to um find a staff person mr baysmore and i was struggling try hoping that there'd be discussion before they got to us and we i think mr baysmore did i say skip me or whatever and i had to come back because it was something that we had not addressed but for the most part and i'll even use the whole water issue we had already taken a vote on the water um and when it came up at May, they had just started discussing it. And they even called up someone who was in water business and water land. But we ended up being the only LEA that voted against it because we had already voted for it as a board. But then May turned around the next year and they voted for it. So we were like, we're bad. We carry it like that in Baltimore <laughs> County. Um, so we've been fortunate in that. So yes, you're right. If we see, and that's why we spend this time and Ms. Rosenberg pulls the bills all the time. So if you go on board docs or whatever, she pulls the bills so we can look at them. So when we come to committee meetings, we have an opportunity to discuss, and then if we need to take it to the board, full board, we can, but not for, you know, just so we have a discussion because the reality is Maeve's executive board, by the time we even get to it, we're just really sort of discussing things and they might ask for a vote occasionally, but most of the time, John, is that, did I say any of that incorrectly, Tony? Mm -mm, that was excellent. And then there's certain times when there, we don't have we, we have no position. It's yeah. like there may be a bill where you don't want to weigh in either way. It kind of whatever way it goes, it just goes that way. So you want to have that option too. I thought that was really good. Yeah. Uh, what you brought but, up, Ms. Clausey, about but that's a good question, um, right. Ms. Clausey, that you yeah. asked. So no, it's not whoever the, the off the top of the head of the reps. Okay, because I wouldn't have a top of my head. Um, if that were the case. Um, so no, that's an excellent question. We try to get out. And that's why right after the, the May meeting, when we have um, bills that where there was some issue, I tried to send it out to the board right away. Sometimes I'm a few days or a week late, but I do try to get it out to the board so everybody knows what went on at the May meeting. 
Great, thank but that's you. a great question. Excellent. Thank you for that answer, um, and thanks for all your work. Really appreciate thank it. You. Thank you, because you put me here in the first place. <laughs> so, uh, Dr. Hager. Yes. Uh, it says there is one coming on recess and wellness too. What is, oh. what is I thought we were still talking about the other topic. Um, no, it's just a, a comment that as we're tracking bills that we know are coming that are of interest to the committee. Um, I know there's uh, every year there's been a recess bill and it's never quite made it. It's made it so close some years, but it's never made it through. Um, so I've heard that there is a revamped recess bill in the works. So um, just one that I'd like to keep an eye on. Thank you very much. Um, Ms. Rowe at 517, already two minutes over. Is this something that has already been answered or something new? Mr. Thomas, why are you typing? Uh, it's very quick, Ms. Go Ms. ahead, Ms. Rowe. Okay, um, Mr. Baysmore, the past several years, there have been a bill about having emergency inhalers available in schools. Can you please see if that bill is going to be submitted this year? Because that bill has gotten new support from the, there's a nursing association of school nurses and they have decided to support that measure and they didn't in the past. And I think that that could change our feelings on the subject. Okay. You're right that the nurses have always been the dividing point on that. So yes, we will check. All right, Mr. Thomas, go ahead. Thank you. I just have a question about some of the other bills that are on the uh, on, on the pre-filed legislation. Uh, I think some of these bills are like, House Bill 0165, 09, 0194, 0200. Um, they are really, really important to curricula, and I would like us to have a, I guess a conversation about those eventually. I, I don't know if by the time we meet again, they'll already be voted on and in like third reading of the other house of the Senate. Um, mm -hmm. But I just think we should have a conversation on some of those bills because uh, they, they are they, are, they could be really great, and uh, I want us to be able to support those. Now those are, they are, that's why I said go back to your board docs, they're on there, go back, read them on board docs. Remember session is open as of next week, so remember we meet on a regular basis during session. May, oh, you didn't know that, that's right. So Wait. we we meet regularly during a bunch, session. Like, is it like once a month or is it like once a week or? Once a month. Okay, great. Yes, so we'll have plenty of time um, uh, Ms. Rosenberg, uh, Dr. Hager does needs the calendar uh, invites, so we need to make sure all of the people who are now on the committee uh, get our dates, please. Okay. Um, so yes, we will always have time. We go through all of them. As I said, Ms. Rosenberg stays on top of her game. Everything that pops out, she pops it to us and Mr. Baysmore addresses it at our meetings for us to decide what we're gonna do. Um, and if it's countywide in, in that same um, uh, vein as Ms. Causey just asked, I will let you know what came up at MABE as well. Okay, should this committee be willing to read that meeting sooner than once a month during session? And we do, Ms. Causey, we have done that as a matter of fact. Um, we're going to start a fact sheet here, okay, because it's important for new people to know that, that there have been times where we couldn't wait until the meeting where there was something that happened, and we will address it because we're not going to mess up open meetings. So act. So as soon as we, Mr. Um, Baysmore sees that there is something that's emergent, he'll let us know and we jump on it. Yeah. Does, I, I'm sure, I guess that answers your question. Can you just sort of nod, give me a thumbs up or something? Yes, uh, thank you, Ms. Pasture, for that. I really appreciate it. Sure, all righty. So if you have any other questions about the committee, uh, I'm excited to have you. I'm really excited about today's discussion. I know Mr. Baysmore is, um, you know what? Now here's Ms. Rowe. All right, uh, then please, email me and um yes you may miss Rowe. you may email more questions and now here's mr thomas all right can i have a motion to uh adjourn please because i can see motion to adjourn. can i have a no, second please. second thomas Sec second miss quasi <laughs> all right thank you it has been moved and seconded and i want to thank all of you again 
You're wonderful. This has been exciting. Have a good evening. Thank you, Madam Thank you. Chair. Thank you. Good night, everyone. Good night. Thank you. Goodbye, everyone. Bye, everyone. Bye.